Yeah, so, anyways, uh, today, what we're going to be doing is this over here. Uh, what this is, is this is a door. Uh, you saw many versions of this in the previous episode. Um, when I was showing things off, the older versions, really, the versions for 1.8. Uh, but as you can see, there's the armor stand there, and what these armor stands are going to do, uh, with like what the system is going to do, is basically it's going to all I have to is going to make it so all I have to do to make a functioning door is just place an armor stand down in the world with a specific name. Uh, that way, it's much easier, and I don't have to have that's why that way I only have to have like one set of command blocks as opposed to uh, one set per door. So. That's basically what this is, and that's basically what we're going to work on today. My, so my current idea, basically, is that uh, this command here uh, is going to start off a repeat command, obviously, but basically what it's going to do is see if there is a player with nearby a door uh, armor stand uh, within the radius, probably like three, four blocks, maybe even five, one of those. Um, and basically, what it's going to do is, if the player is within it, it's going to see if it's open or shut already. And if it's open, it will not do anything. And if it is closed, it will play the opening sequence. And if the player is not within the area, then the player will... Uh, then, not the player, the door will once again test to see if it's open or closed and then it will if it's closed uh, stay closed and other, if it's open then it will close so yeah so I have a uh, scoreboard right now called door state and what door state is going to do is it, it's uh, going to track which um, which uh, frame of the door animation is currently uh, playing and um, I'm just gonna have a couple of command blocks set up that will um, that will set up the animation based off the door frame status and then uh, that will be one set so it'll probably look something like this uh, with a chain oh I have a chain yeah. So it's probably going to look something like that. How many frames do I have? I have four or five frames. So, yeah, that should be enough for... So this will be the line that plays it based off of the animation. And then I will have another uh, set of command blocks that is probably going to be this one. Um, that what it does is it just sets the door states based off of the player's thing. And it will also play sounds, which is very important. So yeah, I'm gonna do that real quick. Okay, so I filled out the I just I just uh filled out the last command for that. Oh wait, no I didn't. I forgot to set the value to four. But yeah, no, I've just uh finished filling out these commands and I'm just gonna give it a quick test. First off I need to always active. Okay, so score wow I can't type uh, objective set display sidebar that uh, door state yes uh, so state is currently zero which is this one um, okay so that's that. Uh, fix that. Okay. Um, scoreboard players set. Nope. At e name equals door six. C equals one. One. Uh, objective one. 
Okay. Good. Two, three. Oh, three's working. Four is working. So three and four are working, but two and one are not. Also, zero is working, but that's a slightly different command than the other, so I'm not really too worried about that. But, okay, three. That should be, okay, so say this is zero, one, two, three. So three and four are also in the correct positions. What's the current time? 13.08, so, what, seven seconds ago? Needs, needs, oh, what? Oh, okay, I think I know what's wrong here. Okay, always active, always active. Well, that is not something I expected. I'm pretty new to these 1.9 commands, but I didn't expect that, actually. Uh, I guess I kind of should have, but I kind of just figured that uh, the way that it pulsed like that was that it actually kind of gave off a redstone signal, which I guess is not true. <laughs> but uh, so what, hap what was happening there um, is that these two were set to always active, I'm guessing that these ones I pick blocked were are set to always yeah see these are I have set to always active by default the ones on my hotbar and these ones I just manually change by clicking over the chain so that uh, that kind of explains that and yeah so that's kind of some interesting behavior I didn't uh, really expect there uh, if you need to have it always active uh, otherwise or just put redstone blocks next to it and Really, that makes a lot of sense now. Well, anyways, so the animation frames are working. Pretty, it's pretty simple stuff. Yep. So that will be pretty. That that that's good. Uh, now I'm gonna work on the second half, where it detects if the player's near it and plays the animation. All right, we are back. So I've got something here. Uh, hold on a second. Yep, that's all. That's good. Um, I don't know if it's wor it'll work. Uh, I haven't tested it yet. I do know, however, that if it does work, it's going to be activating much faster than I want, which will be something I will change. But that's something fairly easy to configure, so I'm not really concerned. Anyways, uh, I approach the door. Uh, can, let me kind of explain what I'm doing so far, I guess, even though it's not uh, entirely functional. Um, so far, I have got an if else statement right here. That's the closing, and that's the opening. Pretty sure that's a typo, but whatever. Um, so basically, what happens here is this repeat command, uh, what it does is it sets this block here to be powered at the beginning of the tick, and then right after it goes to here, it sets this one to be not powered, and then right after it does a little test for, see if there's a player within the area of the armor stand, which... Yeah, I think that that should be working. I think one of the things I'll have to check debugging here. Uh, and then over here, I've got this one, which what it does is it takes this command block. Yeah, this command block here, and it sets it to powered if this one passes. And then it will go to this one here. And we'll take this one and make this one become uh, powered. And this this one, did I say? This one won't be powered when this one gets powered. 
yeah, this one deactivates it. So basically, it's basically saying the condition to close um, to the false uh, condition at first, and it will remain that way if it doesn't find a player within that radius of that. But then, uh, if it does, it will change it to oh, a true condition. Um, hopefully the um, Hopefully these command blocks work the way I think they do, and that this will this whole thing will be executed before this, and and this um, because they are connected. If that's not how it works, and it's still kind of based off of the or the position in the world or whatever, then then I'm going to have to try something else. But I think this should work as of now. I just need to do a little debug testing because I was having problems with um, some uh, syntax or <laughs> no, not syntax. Uh, the name of the scoreboard and whatever. Uh, but hopefully, hopefully I should uh, be a little bit closer now. All right. Welcome back here. Um, I've got it working. I well, partially, of course. Once I'm one step closer. Uh, we had this working last time, where each of these would work. Uh, now over here, I've got. Hold on a second. This is def. This is the best way to do what I'm doing right now. All right. So, um, as we have it right now. Um, I, I don't I don't have it uh, working where it detects the player and opens automatically that way, but I have the opening and closing sequences working with audio, which is very important. Uh, which me, uh, yeah. So let's start off with good old uh, closing sequence. So it's open right now, and uh, let me just enable this. Just like that. Want to see that again? Sure, let me set it back to negative one. Yep, just played it a couple times there for you. Uh, now I'm going to do the opening sequence. Get a little closer and get a better look at that. Five. Might be a little laggy, but uh, tick lag that is. But uh, once we are not in these chunks, I'm pretty sure that will be resolved. If it's not, I'll come back and modify the system. But these won't be rendering uh, during normal gorm game gorm play, nor <laughs> normal gameplay. So uh, that should be good. Anyways, I'm gonna work on the last little bit here where um, we have these toggle based on the location of the player, and uh, I'll be back with you when I have that. Sidebar. Okay. Okay. So the real, uh, the real, uh, the real issue with what I'm doing here is I need to do an if-else statement. In 1.9, there's this uh, wonderful con unconditional conditional command here. So I need to make it so that uh, I need. But the thing is about the conditional command is that if it fail, if uh, the command running into it fails and this one doesn't run, um, it doesn't do anything. It doesn't. Um, yeah, there's nothing happens, and so that's just an if statement. What I want is an if else statement. So I'm just gonna test something real quick here. Uh, pop down a repeat one, a repeat command. Let's say test for a or equals three. Okay, simple enough. 
always active, repeat. So let's say condition, say con1. Okay. Uh, okay. When I walk into range, it does that. Now what I want to see is if chain command blocks keep activating, if the signal keeps getting sent through. So this one's not going to be conditional. Always active, say, con2. Ah, so it does keep activating. Okay. Obviously, okay. Um, so, that works, good. However, uh, this is not exact. This is not exactly how I want it to work because uh, it's not actually condition two because condition two is just currently always activating. So I need a second uh, conditional. So how about block test uh, test for block. Yeah, I can look at data tags. Okay, so test for block, and that's minus 2x, right? Yes. Test for block minus 2. Success count. Oh, no. Uh, Minecraft. Oh my god, my typing. Command block. That is correct, right? Yes, yes. Uh Hmm. I wonder if there actually you need to differentiate between that. Well we'll see. Oh, no caps. No caps. Okay. Uh Minecraft command block. Uh, zero with this, which says success count one B. No, zero B. And then a conditional, which says say con two. Okay. Oh, too many brackets. Always active, always active. Is repeating command block expect? Okay, so there is a difference. Repeating. Is that what it's really called? Repeating. Repeating command block. Has a data value of 5, expected 0. Okay. Uh, does that change? It's probably about orientation. Did not have the acquired NBT keys. Success counts. It's because I'm terrible at typing. All right? Let me block data. Success count zero. Okay. I didn't type anything wrong there, right? Success count, success count. How about I just do just plain old zero? Oh, okay. Now it's just doing condition one. Now it's doing just condition two. Aha, uh -huh, this is exactly what we're looking for. Okay. I'm just going to leave that there for reference. And using that technology, this is the if else statement. I will make this function. So, yeah, I'll be right back. Well, this is not what I want. Hey there, welcome back. Um, so, I finished the door. It's working um, just the way I want it. Well, just for the x-axis, but the uh, z-axis will be just as easy. 
to do. Well, not just as easy, but it'll be very easy to do. Uh, all I have to do is just change the clone commands. Really. And, uh, yeah. So, um, since I last saw you, um, quite a bit's changed, I guess. Um, sound activators that we had over here, um, I changed them out, um, instead of kind of generalizing it as I had before. I had it play a sound at every state, one command block for each state of the door. There are, well, five states of the door, but you only need to do four sounds. So, yeah. Um, and this here is the if-l statement. Uh, what it does is this first one, it tests for a player. Actually, using the test for command, it tests for a player within the radius of the door. I can control the radius right here. Uh, five might be a little big. I'm probably going to shrink it down a bit. Um, but yeah. But uh, basically what happens when there's a player in the radius, what happens here, it sets block, it does a little set block, changing this to uh, wool. Um, and I should note that each of these are conditional. This is not conditional, and these two are conditional here. But uh, yeah, so this uh, this command block turns this to wool. This command block turns this to redstone block. And then this conditional just checks to see if the command block behind it failed. This command block is that command block just to see this command block test to see if this command block fails uh, the test for and if that's the case then I'll do this command which is set a redstone block here and then this command block here and because it's conditional it'll see if this it'll only activate if this one's right and this one will only activate if this one's right but uh, this one just sets this wall over here uh, so let me walk up to the door and show you what I got Obviously, the armor stand will be invisible and probably a marker as well. But, uh, yeah. So that's pretty much that. Um, uh, before I had it, um, here, let me show you my scoreboard. Scoreboard objectives, actually. Yeah, there we go. Uh, door state, that's my scoreboard. Uh, before I had it, where I only had it using values 0 through 4, and that's why I had the little, um, sand entity bouncing up and down before, but then I realized that's that wasn't going to work the way I wanted it to, because the activation pulse would, uh, it would look weird, and it, it's more entities in the world, and I want to not be too heavy on the entities, which, so I just switched over to this, and plus this worked, I don't know, this just worked out much better. I was having a problem where it was summoning multiple entities, and it was triggering kind of these command blocks in a in order I didn't really want, so the door was progressing at kind of infrequent intervals uh, as it was changing its state, not at a constant rate. But uh, yeah, none of that's a problem anymore. So yeah, each of these... That's fine. Um, anyways, uh, so each of these represents which stage of the door it's at. Um, and each of these trigger on a very specific scoreboard. So when the door stage is at 20, it'll close completely. 15, 10, 5, 0. And uh, yeah, so if you watch the scoreboard on the right there, when you approach it, it goes down rapidly. I walk away, it starts to go up again. And if you noticed, those swapped. And yeah. So now, uh, pretty much, I'm going to do the same thing for the um, X. For well, no, this is the X for the Z uh, for the Z axis. And um, really, all that's going to take is a new line for this. And I. Th Honestly, that's it. I just need to do a different line for this. And, uh... 
that's the only that's the only thing. And I'm probably going to change the way that these execute on the armor stand because right now it executes on an armor stand with door SHX. But um, if I were to make an SHZ and just make whole new lines for this, they would be exactly identical. So I'm just going to probably make I'm probably going to change the naming convention to door SH and then just um, make the access a the access variable a tag that only really gets interacted with this command line here and that will cut down on the command blocks and make it so that I only require five command blocks total so uh, yeah I will be back once I get five more command blocks down and uh, yeah Almost. Uh, oh, shit. Uh, oh, 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 that's not okay. Uh, what? How does this not have a minimum? What? This is a remove. Oh, shit. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. Uh, just give that a second to come back. Go. Okay. Excellent. Okay. It's working. Um, yep. So, as I said before, just need to add a second line of commands. Uh, it's the same, basically. Just, uh, the only difference is, well, where I'm cloning it from and what side. You can see that. Um, and uh, also this little tag feature, tag equals x, tag equals not z, uh, and the inverse right there. But uh, yeah, that's basically that. And then one, uh, I, you, you, I, sh I recorded a little clip of that. Um, you saw it. They were all working. They were all executing or whatever. Uh, regardless of what armor stand you approached. So uh, over here, only on the opening, only on the opening, I added a little execute and an R equals 5. Originally I had it as C equals 1 to so only do the closest one, and I was also going to have it execute from the player, but then I realized I was absolutely okay with, say, here. Let me do that. And then do that. I'm absolutely okay with the player walking up and being like executing two at once if they're closely together. So yeah, um, the door is working. The door is functioning, and it's only five lines of commands, which is a okay with me. And uh, yeah, yep. Uh, that's that's about all the time we actually have today. Um, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Uh, we got uh, an important thing done. I want to say a lot, but... Uh, yeah, no, you know what? We got a lot done today. One step at a time. Baby steps, you know? This this took quite some time to do, so... I... Yeah, I'd say a day well spent. Anyways, uh, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. And uh, tune in next time... Uh, where we're gonna go over to the ship and actually get these doors installed.
get them working properly and afterwards uh, maybe take a look at the actual planets that uh, you'll be traveling to as a player so you got that to look forward to um, but yes thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time